Okay, so now question four. What is the charge of nitric acid? So the first thing here is you have to understand what nitric acid is, okay? So with that being said, okay, we have nitric acid being, we know there's a hydrogen because acids need to have that proton. And what does nitric in this case mean? So um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the ion nitrate, okay? Because eight nitrate with the eight ending, when you add the hydrogen to it or hydrogens, it goes from eight to ic. Okay, the eight gets dropped, the ATE, and it turns into ic acid. So if you want to go backwards, if we have nitric acid and we took away the hydrogens, okay, we have nitrate. Okay? That is what we want to go back to, okay? And we need to know what the nitrate ion is. So the nitrate ion, this one is unfortunately one of the things you have to memorize, but I do kind of have a strange way of knowing whether I have it right or not. Nitrate stands from nitrogen and a certain amount of oxygens, okay? And I'm gonna put NO3 because uh, nit nitrate specifically, the ion, has a charge of minus one. How do I know whether this is correct? What I like to do personally is assign the um, the electron numbers um, with them. So oxygen, it, it likes to have the electron uh, number of two. And so because there's three of them, it's going to be six. Nitrogen, okay. And think of these ions specifically always being negative. Um, so I, ha I don't assign any... Um, positive or negative signs to the numbers just yet. But nitrogen, okay, is going to be in the 15th column. So it's going to have five valence electrons. And so the only way for this to work for the minus one, which is why I don't assign any negative values or positive yet, it has to be that the six is negative, okay? And the five was positive. But I like to do it like this because if my numbers weren't matching to where I could not even whether add or subtract to get to the minus one that I wanted, then I know that I have the wrong amount of oxygens. Because nitrate is the one with the oxygens that the charge makes sense. That's how I like to break it down and memorize it because there's also things like um, nitrate, there's also like nitrite, for example, which is NO2, um, and it still has a minus one charge. Um, so it just things like that that makes it a little bit tricky because but I find that by memorizing the eights you have a little bit of an easier time with the eights because it's just subtracting oxygen so with that being said hydrogens typically well protons have a positive charge nitrate as we've shown here has just negative charge so nitric acid would be H N O 3 okay this is nitric acid now they're asking for the charge, okay? So, with that being said, the charge of nitric acid itself, because the positive and negative canceled out, is neutral. That right there is the answer to this question. Because acids are going to be neutral. If you're referring to their conjugate base, which is what we did actually earlier here, that conjugate base has a charge of minus one like things like um, acetates like because um, I'm thinking more like you know like um, acetic acid okay that one it's a uh, conjugate base is called acetate okay and acetate has a charge of minus one because now you've taken away one acid a better example would be like um, H3PO4 which is phosphoric acid okay and this has still neutral charge. You take away one hydrogen, okay, H2PO4, and now we're dealing with dihydrogen phosphate, okay, which is minus one. Take away another hydrogen, and now we're dealing with hydrogen phosphate, which is minus two. And if you take away that last hydrogen, we have this phosphate ion, okay, and which is gonna be three minus, okay. 
1 minus, 2 minus, 3 minus. That is what we're dealing with here in regards to the charges. But exactly, when you start with the one filled to the max with hydrogens, which is what H3 is for phosphate, that is when you have a neutral charge, okay? So with that being said, formal charge is valence electrons minus uh, the change in the lone pairs versus the electrons in bond. So what they did actually in terms of finding their formal charge is what we've been doing. I've been calling the wrong thing, sorry. Uh, but we actually have been finding the formal charge, which is when we, um, for example, like when they drew the Lewis dot diagram, the goal here is to make sure that all the charges, so let's just do that, oxygen, double bond here, single bond here, and then the hydrogen there. Okay, so if we actually went and did the formal charges, which is what we have been doing, but the way to find formal charge is we get the molecule in the center, okay? So the nitrogen, and then we say that it typically likes to have five, because that's five valence electrons. Then we subtract the amount of electrons it has by itself, which is none, plus the amount of electrons it's sharing, which is eight. We have to divide that by two because it's sharing it. So you end up with a plus one, okay? And because you have a plus one, you know that because nitric acid is a neutral uh, compound, you need to have a minus one somewhere. But this is what they mean by formal charge. And then um, oxygen, the one here to the right, okay, we're going to do, it's going to be six, because that's what oxygen likes to have in terms of um, valence electrons. It actually has six electrons by itself, plus it's sharing one with nitrogen. So it's actually going to be, that's where your minus one is. This is where your negative charge is held. Because if you did the math for the rest of the um, oxygens, actually, I'm just going to actually add the other electrons. Uh, but if you did the rest of the math, you would see that the oxygen to the left, where the hydrogen is, is six minus, it only has four by itself and is sharing four. So that does equal zero. The oxygen up top, same thing actually. It has six. It's um, well, valence electron, electrons is six. It has four by itself and is sharing four. And the hydrogen, just to make sure, typically has one, doesn't have any, and is sharing two. And that equals zero as well. So all the math checks out to where actually you know where your positive charge is held and your negative charge is held to where the whole compound itself, nitric acid, is neutral. This is how the picture has shown, okay? But uh, the way I just reason it out is because exactly um, acids, most of the time, you're going to be neutral, okay? Um, because then when you start dealing with things like, um, like for example, like H2PO4, technically you can still have acidic properties where the, a, the hydrogen dissociates to HPO4, but typically you wouldn't see it called acid if I attach a sodium to it. So if I had NaH2PO4, this is known as sodium, well, monosodium phosphate, okay? It's no longer called monosodium phosphoric acid or anything. It's just called monosodium phosphate. And that is because of the sodium attached to it. It can still do acidic things, but when you have acid in the name, think of it as most likely it's going to be a completely neutral um, molecule. Okay, so this is correct. And just so I remember, formal charge is what it's called, where you list these out and you solve it like that. So now we're dealing with question number five. <laughs>